Okay, so let's start the walkthrough on the Marengo campaign here. Uh, first thing the French do, since they're since they have the initiative in the scenario, they get to pick um, their initiative chit. So they pick the Empire Land for, as you can see here. France chooses this chit without a random draw, since it has the initiative. Bonaparte is the leader selected for the first activation. He activates his entire army to move to Geneva for one movement point. So we'll set over here, looking at Napoleon's army. And I'm going to get some tweezers, since those will be more useful. So I seem to be trying to read and move stuff. Um, so we've got Napoleon here. Flipped him to his army side. So you can see he can command up to 12 units. Um, and then you've got the supply train, two supply trains here. All of the other units are in the army boxes, which are off map there. And that's how you're supposed to use uh, you're supposed to use those army boxes. It keeps the, the board from getting cluttered with stacks of counters. So he activates his entire army to move to Geneva, where Monsi is. And I think, I bet I've got Napoleon started in the wrong spot. He is actually, actually starts adjacent. That would be why in this walkthrough it says one movement point. So he starts here. And then let me double check the terrain chart just to make sure there's not like a half. Yeah, clear movement is one MP on the terrain effects charts. So activating this whole army, move him to Geneva, which is where Montsi and the 9th Infantry are. And he integrates. Monsi and his core, which is a plus one movement point action. So now Monsi is added to the army chart. This is the army of Italy. So that adds Monsi and this reduced core to that army, which is now sitting in Geneva. So that's two, two movement points so far. Then he moves through the mountain pass here for another two movement points. And on his way into Italy, he leaves a depot there. And I think I threw a bunch of these counters back in the box. So let me sort through my counter mix and come right back. Okay, adding a depot to the mountain pass. Which apparently, leaving a depot, doesn't cost any movement. In fact, I wonder if leaving a depot just means leaving one of the trains currently in his army behind. Um, that's something I'll have to look up in the rules, since I don't see leaving a depot on the list of land activations. What I do see is he can drop off a whole or part of his stack, otherwise you can extend movement, integrate things absorb things, um, do combat. Let's look under the supply rules. Uh, even on a walkthrough we have questions immediately, but the point of the walkthrough is to kind of pick up the rules and if the walkthrough doesn't explain everything, well then we are left to try and figure it out. And there is
is no table of contents. I'm trying to remember where the supply rules were. Just says, talks about depots. I think for now, since there was no movement or anything, let's assume that the depot he is leaving is just flipping one of these trains to its depot side until I learn otherwise in the walkthrough. So now he's going to move to 3431 here in the woods, probably two movement points, which is what it says in the walkthrough. He ends his activation having spent the sixth movement factor of his army, the Grand Army, which is not really what that is. That's the Army of Italy. Um, is marked first activation. So this is the activation levels. Basically, everybody gets an activation um, over the course of a turn. Additional activations will be considered forced marches that will start to affect attrition. So you don't have to start rolling for attrition rolls. So like most Napoleonic games, you usually don't want to force march because attrition can be brutal. Um, but sometimes you're going to have to. And indeed... One of the cards, according to the scenario, the only event card that France um, starts with, or that any power starts with, is the Forced March card, which allows uh, a leader with initiative of one may force march, or a leader with initiative of at least four may be activated a third time. So Napoleon could potentially have three activations. Ordinarily, you are limited to two. All right, so for the second impulse, um, again, you would ordinarily be drawing these, but since this is a walkthrough, they're going to come out in a certain order. And we get the Empire Naval One chit. It's possible for France to play this chit because only two consecutive land activations by the same side are prohibited. So they already did their land activation. Now they can do a C1. They would not be able to do a second land one. You'd have to put the you'd have to set that chit aside, draw again until you get either the opposing side uh, land activation or a naval activation. France elects to activate the stack of naval units in Rochefort, which is over here on the Bay of Biscay. And uh, I, these are face up. Ordinarily you would have all of your fleets, your fleet commanders face down because all it has is the movement on that side. So it like hides, you know, what, how, how strong your fleets are. So the French have Messiasi and Linois, and uh, they're going to spend an MP to engage the two British units out here in the Bay of Biscay, who also would ordinarily be flipped, and you would reveal them here. It's Calder and Sterling. Um, the British could try to avoid, but decide to fight. The French stack rolls 1d6 plus 2 for Messiasi and 1d6 plus 1 for Linois. Simultaneously, the British stack rolls 1d6 plus 1 for Calder and 1d6 for Sterling, a zero modifier. So, yeah, so these are your, the second number here are going to be your modifiers that you would roll for these guys. So, uh, just looking at the walkthrough here, the French get a 9 result and the British get an 8. The French win the battle, but the opponent does not suffer any losses because the difference is less than 4. The British force must retreat and join the British naval unit in the South Atlantic. There's a guy out here in the South Atlantic. Maximum stacking in a C zone is three, so these two can join this one, and that's fully stacked in the South Atlantic. There are two French units. Um, although having one, remain cautious and decide to return to Rochefort for another movement point. And so, Uh, no more French, they end their activation there, no more French naval units are activated, and the naval impulse ends. Now, 
you did set up French units. You can see there's some in Brest up there, which are blockaded in. Um, there's also some up in Holland, uh, which are also blockaded in. And then you've got some guys down here on the southern coast in Marseille. And I think otherwise it's just British units all over the Mediterranean. So, and, you know, around near Gibraltar, the usual places where you expect to see British fleets. Okay. Um, for the third impulse, I actually have these, threw these chits in the mug. Um, I should have laid them out because now I have to fish them out of this mug. We've got the Coalition Land 4 counter. And I'm about out of time, so I will post this video up, I'll end up editing all these together, um, but on my phone to get the the uh, 60 FPS HD. I only have about 10 minutes of filming, so I will be right back. And for the Coalition Land Activation 4 chip, the Coalition activates no leaders. So now we move on to the fourth impulse, Empire Land 3. First activation, Augereau and his troops, or his corps in 2921 is activated. And 2921, move my camera up here in the Low Country of Holland. There's Augereau. He has the 7th or the 8th Infantry Corps. He activates and invades Hanover, which is, that's Amsterdam. He's going in the other direction, so Hanover's here. Uh, Brock tries to intercept in 3120. Why do I not see Brock out here? Well, let's come back and see if I forgot to set somebody up. Okay, I just didn't have the right guy there. In the setup for this, frequently there are sections which just call for like leader, one leader. Um, and so you're allowed to pick from your initiative pool or your, uh, your leader pool, uh, the leader that you want to put there, subject to, uh, you know, date availability restrictions. So I just had the wrong guy. It was Brock here and I had somebody else um, who Ironically, it was the exact same initiative. But anyway, Ogero invades Hanover. He moves one movement point to there. He tries to move to here, and Brock attempts to intercept him. Um, Brock would have a negative one for in initiative differential since Ogero is a three, Brock is a two. Um, so on his initiative, his interception roll, he rolled 2d6, and he rolls. A seven minus one is a six. The interception fails as to intercept, you need to have at least a modified 10 on a 2d6. So fairly difficult to, to intercept in the game. So Ogero continues his movement to there. And then he enters Hanover. This would be his third MP. He enters that hex. And Brock accepts battle rather than withdraw into the fortress, which would be um, an automatic success to avoid battle in this case to withdraw into the fortress, but he's going to fight it out. The field battle is a skirmish. If there's less than nine steps, it's a skirmish. Um, I think if there are more than nine steps, but one side has fewer than nine steps, it's a minor battle. And then I think if both sides have more than nine steps, it's a major battle. Um, there might be another level in there that I'm forgetting. But anyway, the French have a morale level of four. The Hanoverians a three. I think that's on our yeah. That's on our cores there. Um, the defender is in supply. They now collect their modifiers. Combat odds are one to one with two combat points each. No one has more artillery or cav than the other. Ogero has a plus one commander modifier and a plus one lead assault unit modifier, which is. I believe that, that number right there. Um, uh, the 
gauge roll 2d6 on the skirmish CRT. Which I have somewhere. The skirmish. Uh, Augereau rolls an 11, plus 2 equals 13 for a 1 plus result. And Brack also rolls an 11 plus 0 for a 1 result. The French win the battle as they obtained a plus result, which means the side with such a result wins the battle if the loss numbers are tied. Um, both involved cores are reduced. That's what the number meant, is that each side takes a step loss, which means you flip these guys. The Hanoverians do not take a morale check because it's a skirmish. They choose to retreat into the fortress. Which, as you can see under there, Hanover is a fortress. And also there's a gold star there. I guess that's a victory point location. Augereau can besiege as a reduced core, as a reduced core is enough to besiege a level one fortress. Since he won the battle, he can continue his activation to spend one MP for a total of four so far on a siege operation. So this is uh, a little different than most games that I've played where uh, you can't move in and immediately siege. And furthermore, you can't fight a battle and move in and then siege. So in this game, the uh, everything is done via movement operations. And if you have enough movement to do something, you can do it. Now there's instances where your movement will be stopped which losing a battle would be one of those, um, likely because you'd be forced to retreat. But you know, as it says here, he won this battle, so now he can keep moving. He could move out of the hex if he wanted to. He could do any number of other movement actions um, if he so chose, and one of those actions is a siege operation. So um, he spends one MP to do that. He rolls on the siege table. Oops, which I have somewhere, weirdly enough, for the combat results table on the chart. Um, and so there, you roll, uh, he gets a 10, you roll 2d6 on the siege table, he gets a 10 plus 1 for his combat modifier for a result, for an, a result of 11, which is H, which is honors of war. The fortress is given honors of war, it surrenders, and the besieged force returns on the map during the next spring reinforcement segment. So the fortress surrenders, and Brock and his reduced core will return as reinforcements during the next spring turn, which we won't see here because this is only a one turn walkthrough to show how this stuff works. But we'll put him on the next turn track anyway, just to get him out of the way. Um, Augereau chooses not to reactivate the fortress, which is one of the options that they have, which is um, fairly common in games. I know like On to Paris was the same way. You could play with a rule that allowed you to keep fortresses active, um, usually at a reduced level. So here, um, he's not going to reactivate the fortress, so we put a fortress removed marker on the fortress. He then ends his activation and we put hopefully the Napoleon, a first activation marker on there. Uh, I think in the rules it said for core commanders you can also flip them to show they've been activated. Uh, my view is that would just get confusing, uh, especially if you're using Activation counters for some and not for others. Uh, so I'm just going to mark everybody with the activation counters. Okay. So the second activation, Davu, is activated, and I believe is he with the Army of Germany. So, yeah, which is under Moreau. But he is going to bring a corps and an engineer that are part of the Army of Germany. So let me pull Davout's counter off 
of the German army box. Uh, it's not clear here which core he's bringing with him. There's a mix of plus two and plus one cores, so I guess I'll give him a plus two core. I'm not sure if he has command restrictions. He's an initiative four leader, so. And one of the engineers. So I'm doing a lot of this off camera here. Because I've got this book in front of me, it's hard for me to hold the camera and move it around, so I'm trying to leave it fixed. So. Here's these extra units that I pulled out of the Army of Germany. He is going to attack the Austrian leader, Johann, who's here defending. Whoops, I think we end up that far off, right? So he's here. He's going to attack Johann, who's here defending Baden. Um, Johann is going to try and avoid combat. He has a modifier of plus four for the leader, reduced to plus three, which is the maximum allowed. And he succeeds, obtaining a 10 plus three equals 13, needing a 10 or more. He withdraws to 35, 26, which is right there. Davu can besiege Baden and spends an MP on a siege operation. Because again, these guys can move, fight, siege. They can do lots of stuff in a row if things go right for them. Um, oh, yeah, you know, he crosses this river here, which you don't need to spend engineers or pontoons on because there are marked bridges there. So it's a strategic crossing. Um, he also receives an H result on the siege table. So the fortress surrenders. He doesn't reactivate it. So we do another fortress removed. I don't know. Is the French fortresses along the border here? <laughs> I feel like you're eventually going to be retreating and maybe want to keep some of those active to protect your own frontier, but I don't know. I'm cautious. Um, he ends his activation, so we mark him also with a first activation marker. And for the fifth impulse, we have the Coalition Land 1. For the first activation, the Austrian leader, Ott, down here. He is in Genoa. <clears throat> he spends two <clears throat> movement points on a siege operation. Genoa has a siege duration marker of plus one, which is underneath all of his army counters. You can see the siege plus one. Um, Ott rolls on the siege table the total plus one, plus one for Ott, minus two for Messina, who's there, plus one for the siege duration, plus one for the engineer. Rolls a 2d6 of nine, plus one equals 10 for an A. We're in the level two column because Genoa is a level two fortress. And I believe that's also why it was two MPs. Um, the fortress level will determine the number of MPs you need to spend to do a siege operation. So he gets an A on the level two column. And A is assault, standard one round land battle. The fortress surrenders if it's demoralized, except for a level three, or if every strength point, including permanent fortress strength points, are eliminated. So, a siege battle now takes place. The French have a morale level of three. Let me split these counters out so they can see who's who. There's the engineers. And Ott has a infantry corps and a detachment. Underneath the siege there, you can see Messina. He's got an infantry third division. And I don't remember the setup, if it's specified. Um, what core Messina actually had there. That was part of the problem, is a lot of these didn't. 
Um, so the French have a morale level of three, two fortress points with a morale value of three, and one reduced core with a four morale value, which looks accurate. Because um, this is reduced, and there's a four there. Uh, the Austrians have a three morale level as well. Their infantry core is a three morale value. And um, the French have three combat points, two for the fortress and one for the reduced core. Ott uh, also has a total of three combat points for a one-to-one -one odds ratio. France has two fortress point artillery. Ott uh, only one, I think. Um, cores have artillery as part of them, since there's no actual... Oh, no, it's actually on the counter. Yeah, the second number is the artillery value. Um, and your combat modifier is the first number, your morale is the third number. Uh, so... Let's see. Oh, and uh, the, so the... I'll just tally through here. The, this is two combat points for a full strength core, and then one combat point for the detachment, so that's how the Austrians have three, whoops, that detachment's not part of the army, this is, um, the engineers are included. Uh, the French have one point for their reduced core and two for the strength of the fortress in terms of combat points, that's your, your numbers for your odds ratio. Um, so France has two fortress point artillery, Ott only one. Ott the attacker rolls 2d6 for an eight, plus one for his commander modifier, Oops, which is the third number there. Um, gives him a nine for a result of zero plus. And you're on the skirmish table, which is where sieges are also counted. Um, so the zero plus means that if the French also get a zero then the, and, and no plus, then um, the Austrians would win. Uh, Messina then rolls 2d6 for a six, plus two for his commander bonus, plus two for his lead assault unit, this third infantry, um, plus two for double artillery superiority, which two to one, but that's still double, uh, as a total of 12 for a result of one star. And... The asterisk is no loss in siege if a level one fortress fires, but this is a level two fortress. So had Genoa only been a level one fort, there would have been no loss, but now the Austrian detachment is eliminated. So goodbye. And uh, return to the force pool. Austria lost the battle, but there's never a morale check for the besieging side. The siege duration level is raised to plus two. So that was an assault. I bet I can just flip this. Yep. So it puts plus two there. It's the engineers, the infantry. Alright. Ott is not discouraged, his time is short, and Bonaparte's army is closing in from Piedmont. He spends two more movement points for a new siege operation. See, usually you only get to do one siege operation um, before you're ended, before you're forced to stop and do whatever else. Um, you know, move on to another activation. But here your guys can just keep doing things as long as they have MPs. Um, so he spends two more MPs for a new siege operation. The die roll modifier is now plus two due to the length of the siege, and Ott rolls a six plus two equals eight for a no result on the siege table. So he needs to roll higher. Uh, now the siege duration is raised to level three. Maybe I could count it for that. Uh, 
kind of spending his forces' last two movement points on uh, attempts to siege operation yet again. Now with a plus three, yielding an honors of war result. The exhausted Genoa fortress surrenders. Ott reactivates it, reducing his infantry corps. Meaning that he's adding guys to the inherent garrison there. And what happens is poor Messina goes just like Brock did in the last activation, off to the... Um, turn track to show up in the spring and um, so let me do Ott's infantry corps reduces because he's putting a garrison there and he has no more movement factors with his force so ends his activation he gets it first activation marker For the second and third activations, the Austrian player decides to first activate the detachment in Livorno, which is right here, and then the detachment in Florence, which is right there, which is possible with an initiative one marker, as long as they do not move adjacent to an enemy combat unit or into a hex with an unbesieged enemy fortress. The first detachment moves to Genoa and absorbs itself into Ott's core turning it to full strength again, so he can suck up surrounding units and replenish his guys. Austrian quality, troop quality is not great. And uh, the first detachment moves to Genoa and absorbs itself into Ott's core, turning it to full strength again. The second detachment also moves to Genoa Ott is still only marked first activation, so obviously you can't get, you can't absorb the second guy because you don't have another army corps there, and they can't be stronger than two steps. So he just now has the same size force he had when he started, but he controls that fortress now as well. For the fourth activation, the Bavarian corps, thanks again to the initiative one marker. Uh, activates to move on its own to Milan via extended march. Okay, here's a good question. Where's the Bavarian Corps? Okay. I need to go see what this is talking about. Ah, I got it. I just didn't see it here. It's under read. And he's not moving with it because this is a one activation, so the core is moving by itself. Now, it does an extended march, which is one point times its movement factor, uh, which triggers an, an attrition check on the one-step column with an automatic no-loss result. So in Milan, so this can march all the way to Milan, from Munich all the way to Milan. It's interesting. So that would be one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm guessing that's how it gets there. Um, regardless, it can absorb the Austrian detachment because these guys are all on the same side, and now you flip him to full strength. Uh, the core is marked with a first activation. And these guys didn't get additional markers because they absorbed into that force, so which was already marked. First activation, it does not increase that core's activation, or that, that force's activation. Uh, for the fifth activation, Colorat activates to move to 3632. And he's down here. Um, to screen Milan, 3632, is that what it was? Yeah. So his force moves to there. Um, with his three-step force, he then ends his activation, is marked first activation, and the coalition ends the impulse.
Okay, for the sixth impulse, we get Empire Land 1. For the first activation, Bonaparte activates his army for the second time, performing a forced march, which causes an attrition check. He's here. He enters Turin for one movement point. Helping with these stacks here and I'm scattering stuff everywhere. Uh, performs a siege operation for another MP for an A result. They don't give me the die roll here, so I'm just reading through it. Uh, the A result being an assault. Um, in the siege battle, he causes enough step losses to eliminate the lone fortress point of Turin, so it's captured with no loss to the besieger, Bonaparte decides to reactivate the fortress, eliminating his last supply train to do so. So, looks like I was correct earlier about dropping the depot, which, whoops, I think I left behind. Should be back here. Um, eliminating his last supply train. And that's something I'm not actually entirely sure of in the rules, that you can use a supply train to supply a fortress. But apparently you can, or you not supply a fortress, but create a garrison for a fortress. Um, he proceeds to attack Mela's army in 35-33. This would be the Austrian army of Italy. We have army of Italy versus army of Italy, and there's Mela's, or Mela, or whoever. Um, That's another movement point for Napoleon. Uh, Melas' army decides not to avoid combat, since this is a forced march for the army of Italy, because he's on his second activation now, uh, and must check for attrition before each field battle, not before a siege battle. So that's why he didn't have to do this, the attrition earlier. Uh, Bonaparte has nine steps, so rolls on the seven to nine column with a minus three modifier. Two because it's a French force, and one because the force has spent only three MPs. And roll a 10 minus three equals seven for a one result. One infantry corps is reduced. Looks like these are all, oh, there's a plus one infantry corps. Oh wait, that's the one that's already reduced. So I will reduce one of these two, one, four cores over there in the army of Italy. Uh, Melas sends word to both Kolarat and Ott, who are both adjacent to the battle hex, to march to the sound of the guns, designating them both to be part of his army for this purpose. Kolarat has a plus two die roll modifier, both his own combat modifier and his army commander Melas is one. There's Ott. Uh, he rolls a nine plus two equals eleven, more than the retired wired ten. Oh, yeah, I'm not looking at Ott, I'm looking at the other guy. Colorat. And so this whole thing, armies can call in. So when an army activates, he can activate any units that are also adjacent to him, any friendly units. So uh, that's this uh, concept of march to the sound of the guns, which is, which is actually different than the army adjacency activation capability. Um, it, you don't. You wouldn't even have to have an army here. You could just be fighting a field battle here, and if there's adjacent units, they can attempt to march to the sound of the guns, which basically functions like an interception role. Um, it's just the end result is not the same as an interception. But so you know, if you, it's one of the strategies listed in the rules was um, or is uh, rather than having a giant monster stack of troops. Uh, one good way to to function is to spread your troops out, but keep them all in these sort of adjacent, all kind of adjacent to each other in more of a strung out line. And then as people move, you can react like up and down this line to to instances like this where you can do a march to the sound of the guns and uh, react in. You know, obviously the drawback is that reaction rolls have to be pretty high on a two two d six roll. So. Um, anyway, uh, 
Colorat rolls this 9 plus 2 equals 11, more than the required 10. Colorat decides to enter the battle with all of his force. Ott has the exact same modifiers, but rolls a 7 plus 2 equals 9 and fails to join his army commander for the battle. So, essentially, Colorat moves his whole force, including the train, which does the train does not go to the off-map army box. But Colorat and all his troops do. the camera around to these off-map boxes just because I don't have the free hands to do so. But Ott is stuck where he is. Put that back on there since he won't be joining. After moving Colorado to the battle hex and integrating it into Malus army, it has eight steps compared to the nine steps of Bonaparte. An important note, as Colorado's core was already marked first activation, hence at activation level one, the entire army of Italy is marked first activation since it integrated a core with a higher activation level. So that essentially puts one of those on, on there, even though it's not that army's acti actual activation at this moment. Checking the battle magnitude next, it is a minor battle since 17 combat steps are involved. The French morale level is four, the majority of his core. And indeed, oh, he's even got a he's even got a five morale. That's cavalry. That would explain. Uh, the majority of his core of Napoleon's cores are four morale, so that makes their morale level four. The Austrians have three. The Austrians are in supply. Odds are one to one or nine to eight. France has six versus five artillery points for a plus one modifier, but Austria has three versus two cavalry points because. I don't see where the third cavalry point is in the off-map boxes. That may be a misprint. It's actually a two-to-one because there's one cav point for... Um, or not, I, okay, uh, I ran out of video there for a second. Uh, I keep thinking in terms of actual counters and not steps. So... Um, the Austrians do indeed have three steps of cav, and the French only have two. So, um, French morale levels four, uh, odds are one to one, French have the plus one mo artillery modifier, Austria has a plus one modifier for the cav, Bonaparte adds his own combat modifier of plus three, but also decides to commit Dizé to the battle for another two. And Dizé is over here in the army box. We'll just, just come over there as a reminder. Um, for another plus two, this will cause a leader casualty check for Dizé. Bonaparte also elects to commit a reduced plus two infantry corps as his lead assault unit. And that was the one that was reduced from the siege. Should be over there. Uh, Malas has his own combat modifier of plus one, commits no subordinate leader, but does commit a reserve infantry corps as lead assault unit for a plus one. And only the Austrians have reserve infantry, so just put that there. Um, Malice has a net DRM of plus three, while Bonaparte has a net DRM of plus eight. So, yeah. Bonaparte rolls an eight plus eight equals 16 for a result of four CL. I believe this is a minor battle. Yes, four CL. He inflicts four step losses. The first loss because of the C must be taken on the reserve infantry corps. Or not because of the C, but has to be taken on the reserve infantry corps because that was the lead combat unit. Um, so it's reduced, so I'll just flip it. Uh, then the C causes a cavalry loss, reducing the zero cavalry unit, which was one of the units in the off-map box, or army box. Um, 
The remaining two losses can be distributed freely, and the Austrian player eliminates a full-strength infantry corps. Also off of the army box. Uh, Mellis rolls an 11 plus 3 equals 14 for a 3L result. First loss eliminates the reduced infantry corps, which was the lead attacker here. Uh, the other two losses eliminate a second infantry corps. Okay. I'll just pull one off of the army box. Now the two sides must check for leader casualties. Desay must roll for being committed, and the L scored by France causes a check on his lowest ranked leader, Victor. Desay rolls a six and is killed. <laughs> that would not be something that happens all that often. Victor rolls a three and is unharmed. Austria also scored an L result with their roll, and Weyrother, who is one of the lowest ranking leaders and selected to bite a bullet by Mellis, rolls. He rolls a four and is wounded, which would normally return into play in spring, but this scenario will be over before then, so he's removed from play. Um, the French win the battle, having inflicted more losses than the Austrians, four versus three. Mellis rolls a morale check against a modified morale of 3, plus 1 for his combat modifier, and minus 1 for the step loss differential. The roll is a 4, and the Austrian army becomes demoralized. And there are markers for that. First of all, I'll put the reserve back on the army box. He still has the activation marker and a demoralized marker. In the resulting pursuit, because there's cavalry, you'll have pursuit when a unit becomes demoralized. If he didn't become demoralized, you wouldn't have pursuit. But because of the demoralization, you have pursuit. Um, in the resulting pursuit, the two French cavalry steps cause two losses. And I don't remember if that's... Yeah, so it's a pursuit. Um, one step loss, including supply units, for every pursuing light cavalry and caustic step, every, every pursuing guard cavalry step, and every two pursuing cuirassier cavalry steps. So... Uh, and light cavalry is basically your like regular cavalry, um, unless they're guard or cuirassiers, they 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 um, aren't considered. And those are like your special cav or your heavy cav. Uh, everything else is light. So if it's unnamed, it's basically light cav. Um, so because the French have the two cavalry steps, they take they inflict two more losses. So. For the army of Italy, that eliminates or reduces an infantry corps and eliminates the supply train. So he had one unreduced infantry corps left, and then the supply train is here on the map with him, and that gets killed. So that didn't turn out too well. Uh, Melis army now retreats to Milan. So then we go boom, boom. In the process, integrating the Bavarian Corps force found there, the army, which includes all its contents, is still marked first activation and now also demoralized. Um, and unfortunately, the way I've got the camera set up and the angle that I'm sitting at, my hand keeps blocking the camera. When I grab counters, there's not too much I can do about that at the moment. Moving my camera around. Um, could end up to a different spot, could end up causing glare. So we'll survive. Um, now the integrated core also gets to be demoralized because it's been integrated into a demoralized force. Bonaparte ends his activation and is marked activation over. You know, he would be here, he would have advanced into that hex when he moved there. He is activation over. Because he's had his second activation, he can activate no more, unless I use that card. Um, France makes no further activations this impulse. Alright, for the seventh impulse, we have Coalition Naval 1. Coalition makes no naval activations and ends the impulse. Eighth impulse, Coalition Land 2. First activation, Melas here in Demoralized in Lombardy. 
Activate it for the second time and spends three movement points to try to rally. He rolls against the modified morale level of three, base three minus one for demoralization, plus one for his combat modifier. He rolled a four for a failed rally attempt. Malas is not dissuaded, tries again, this time rolling a six, which fails as well. At this, as this is the army's second activation, it's a forced march. Now that the activation ends, he must check for attrition. He has six steps has used six movement points and is demoralized, which is a plus three. He rolls on the four to six column and the two to six yields a four plus three equals seven for a star result. Malas will take a step loss on a roll of four to six minus one as the army is in a city. Malas rolls a two for no loss. An activation over marker is placed on the Austrian army. So being in the city helps for attrition, looks like. The coalition makes no more activations and ends the impulse. For the ninth impulse, we have Empire Land 2. For the first activation, the French activate Mortier's Corps in Nice. Let's see, he's down here. Reduced Infantry Corps. Moves him to protect the French line of communications south of Turin. That's Genoa, there's Turin. Not sure if the French LOC is south of Turin. The, it doesn't give me a hex number here. I'm guessing. One, two, three, four. I'm not sure if they're talking about guarding the pass here. That seems more likely because here there's no pass. So the LOC would be through here into France. So I'll leave him there for now, unless there's something that will change that. Uh, he gets marked first activation. Second activation, uh, normally Bonaparte's Army of Italy would not be able to available to activate again this turn, as it says activation over, but thanks to the Force March event card, which I showed earlier, but here it is again, at least four, which Napoleon has, may be activated a third time, subject to attrition. Bonaparte activates and moves to attack Ott in Genoa. who avoids combat automatically to withdraw to the fortress. So, because he's in a fortress hex, you can do an automatic avoid combat instead of having to roll for it. So that's what he does. Bonaparte spends two movement points on a siege operation because it's a two strength fortress. It's a breach result on the siege table. Breach means standard one round land battle, but the besieged force is destroyed at the end of the battle and the fortress surrenders. So it's kind of like a from hell's heart I stab at the situation where all you're trying to do as the defender at this point is inflict casualties. Um, the siege battle inflicts, which again it's not showing here, it doesn't actually give me the die rolls. Some it does and some it doesn't. Here it does not, and it just says. Uh, the Siege Battle inflicts two step losses on Ott, which means... Now he had the detachment, and then he could have flipped his core. So the detachment would die, and his core would take the second loss. But inflicts no losses on the French. Since it was a breach, he's destroyed anyway. And let's see, I'm not sure what happens to him. Let's see. Um, his core is destroyed, no losses to the French. Since it is a breach, the fortress then surrenders automatically. Odd is treated as if wounded since he is in a fortress that is captured. So I think wounded means you're stuck. Uh, you're, you're, out of the game until next spring. 
Bonaparte does not reactivate the fortress and moves next to Milan. He does not reactivate the fortress. I think that means fortress removed. And then Napoleon moves next to Milan there. Uh, Melas is demoralized and cannot try and intercept. So moving into these spaces here, ordinarily he could intercept. In this case, because he's demoralized, he cannot. Bonaparte ends his activation, making an attrition check with no losses. And so we'll put the activation over back on him because now he indeed is over. He's played his card and can take no more activations this turn. And last but not least, 10th Impulse Coalition land three. Coalition activates no leaders. This is the end of the activation phase. There are no more initiative markers left in the pool. So the phase ends. This scenario only includes the activation phase and the victory phase. So the other phases are skipped. Those other phases are, let me find my sequence of play. So you start with an events phase and uh, that's where you, you um, shuffle and draw your event cards. Um, and I don't know if it, this is France, two to five, Britain, two others, one. If Spain and Turkey are unplayed, they do not receive a card. Um, so I think it, the, the number of cards you draw varies uh, depending at the points of the game or the scenario you're playing. Um, and then anybody who draws a public event, uh, if they have one, they, they uh, have to play them at that point in the events phase. So first up is the events phase. Then you have spring, and you do have seasons in the game. Down here, as you can see. There's your year 